<laughs> there we go. That's a good yeah. catch. All right. Yeah. So there's two examples in, in my experience. Maybe Bert, you have other examples to give. Um, recent ones. So for example, we work a lot with um, circle economy. And um, while it might not be directly working with the company themselves, by providing them insight, they then produce these reports that then go to towards um, other companies. Uh, and they, they generate also workshops to, to support smaller companies that want to become circular. Um, but for example, a bigger project that they're working on now is trying to understand what is the gap of skills and employment to drive circular economy. And so we participated in that. They held several meetings and they ask us lots of questions and there's a lot of discussion going on that. And we contribute a lot, our own experience, and then they use that to, it, we are part of the, the data that goes into developing those reports. The second example, which is, uh, for example, with uh, B Corp, this is not necessarily directly being circular, but following a really good B Corp uh, score that we have, a lot of companies have said, hey, guys, how did you reach the score? So Bert is always um, pushing them to my in my direction, saying, OK, Laura, go speak with them and 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 uh, share your knowledge. And, and it's really part of that. It's it's sharing your knowledge in, in how we're achieving what we're doing, um, what are the targets that we're setting, how we're hoping to achieve them, et cetera. Um, yeah. Bert, I don't know, maybe you have other? Yeah, I, I think she mostly met other companies like uh, IKEA, for instance. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean, Savu? So we did this uh, project with um, IKEA where they asked, they want to be circular in 2030, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since since we are recycling then already for ten years now, they they wanted to make an uh, one item circular. So we we proposed the the cover for the clip on. I, you must have seen it this passing by. So we um, it took two years. We took them along and how, how how to get old jeans to Spain, recycle them, make them into new fibers, and this whole thing what we are doing. So they were amazingly happy to work with us on this uh, item which is also good for us, of course, because I think a lot of people have seen it and it gave us a lot of uh, uh, press releases and things like that. Yeah. And other companies, uh, we make, for instance, uh, uh, aprons for companies that have, for, for instance, hotels that have people uh, in the kitchen or in, in, the, in the restaurant walking around with our aprons, things like that we do, of course. And then, of course, there's also uh, Tommy Hilfiger who's asking us to speak at their annual conference and explain what we do. So their whole CSR team is there and they can join in and we tell them uh, where we do what. It's also in our sustainability report that Laura just finished writing, the 2021. When is it coming out, Laura? This Next week? I'm coordinating with Danik. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to release it really soon. But you said next week, last week already. Well, <laughs> it has to be this week or next week. It depends on the week, you know, she just came back yeah. from vacation, so we need to. Yeah. So watch that, guys. It's interesting for you. I think it's 78 pages full of every detail, what we do and how we do it. So it should be interesting. So is that okay, Savi? Let's go to Louise. Louise de la Noix, de la Belgique. Bonjour. <laughs> yes, hi, uh, I'm Louise. First, thanks a lot for doing this. It's great to be able to talk to you uh, directly and, and ask questions. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm a master's student uh, in Amsterdam, actually, um, but I did it from Belgium online anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, and so I'm studying uh, international business law uh, focused on climate change and sustainability. And uh, I'm writing a thesis on B Corp. And uh, so more precisely on the impact uh, of the B Corp certification on a company. So uh, I'm interviewing uh, and sending questionnaires to companies that have been uh, certified B Corp for some years and to see like, what impact it has on the company. So in terms of reputation, uh, press awareness, uh, partnerships, so all, all the change that can happen. And it's more focused on the non-financial impacts. I'm not gonna analyze where, whether uh, they're uh, it's like they're making more profit or anything. It's more the, the non-financial impacts. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, I got in contact. Nice with thesis. Her. Interesting. Nice thesis. Interesting. Thank I'd you. love to read that once you've finished it. Well, thanks. Yeah, I can definitely send it to you. So um, the past few weeks, I've been reaching out to many B Corps uh, in Europe, especially. Um, and so I reached out to uh, Matt Jeans. Um, and one of your colleagues uh, answered me uh, that I could participate in this webinar, so it's even better. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you generally um, if you have some comments on the impact of the B Corp certification on your company uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, I have a whole kind of list of criteria, but uh, yeah. Uh, so well, you're lucky there are not that many people, so you can shout up. I can start thinking. Yeah, you can start with a general, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's for us um, fantastic to have a sort of a, a network. So we are very good friends with the people of, of Topper and, and Tony Ciccoloni and uh, we have meetings with Patagonia. So it, it gives you also uh, access to other people in the field and other businesses also to um, change, uh, exchange views. Uh, one part, the second part is it attracts a lot of young, motivated, well, very high skilled uh, people that want to join your company, which is of course beautiful. Um, it, um, it also is a good lead in your company, within your company to tell people that join or that they, within the company to say, okay, have a look at our audit because we, we answered so many questions. Uh, you have to give so much data and, and answers that, that people can really know your company from in and out, uh, if, if they see what your answers are. What am I forgetting, Laura? You, you've been the queen of the, 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 the B Corp audit lately. Yeah. We, we, we were one of the first uh, B Corps in 2013, nearly. And now Laura made us joining the top five Benelux, highest scoring B Corps. So she's, uh, she's been scratching the last points to make sure that we at this high uh, score. Yeah, the B Corp assessment is very thorough, like Bert was saying. Um, so I think it's also a great structure to, you know, review your company every few years and look what you're doing well and what you can do better. So in that sense, yeah. from a sustainability perspective, it gives you a structure um, to for for future strategy development, for example, that I use that specifically for that strategy development later on that has been really useful and then also in terms of a community with other b corps it has been really interesting to work with them for some of the sort of the bigger challenges um, such as for example the net zero commitment we are already uh, carbon neutral since 2016 but taking that and talking about it from a policy perspective and everything that comes in relation to climate change, they have been really useful in, in creating sort of that platform. Another really interesting subject, for example, is the subject on um, race and diversity. Um, we worked a lot with B Corp and we actually founded a working group on diversity and inclusion and we came together with other B Corps and started working on this topic. Because you can sit alone in your office and do all of your Googling all you want, but it becomes a very different discussion once you start discussing it with other businesses that share your values. And maybe, for example, Tony Ciccoloni is super strong in diversity and inclusion. And they have really, I mean, they have a head of culture. You know, They have like all of these positions that you would never think of because they're such an advanced company. So it has been really interesting to, to share that knowledge in that way also. So um, yeah, those are my two thoughts on, on that. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Rose, Rose Oakland, all the way Hi, from there. Oakland. Hi, yeah. Uh, I am doing my master's in Edinburgh, okay. uh, at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and I'm doing my thesis on how um, fast fashion companies can untangle their supply chains to create better socially sustainable relationships with suppliers Ooh. and manufacturers. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult one. Sorry? That's a difficult one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Good luck. laughs> um, so, 
a good question, I think, for me to start with would be um, what barriers were in place to create your supply chain um, in a sustainable way, just as a simple. There were no barriers. <laughs> no barriers, Rose. No barriers. No, as long as you pay the price, there are no barriers. So, cost. Yeah. Uh, right. Cost and also distance. You know, we wanted to stay closer to home as possible. So don't mm -hmm. go really far to the far east and things. So mm -hmm. one one thing is trying to be closer to home. So we we work now in Spain with our uh, material supplier, the one that's shredding the jeans and making the new yarns. And our our Ustex factory is in uh, in Tunisia. So that's like the closest you can get one part. And the second part is make sure that the people earn a proper living. And there also you can use all its. I'm always saying, okay, Valencia is Europe. Uh, things should be okay, people-wise. Uh, but in uh, Spain, we had first uh, the Fair Revelation checking our factory. Now we work with, who is that doing the audit now, Laura? Company? Well, in Spain, they are quite regulated by the European um, laws. So laws, they, yeah. But they then follow up with their own auditing processes. Um, they have the BSCI audits and they follow up with their own, um, yeah. Yeah, but I meant Ustex. Who's oh, doing Ustex, the, sorry, yeah. sorry, yeah. They completed the audit with the SLCP. Uh, oh. They also completed one with GOTS, GOTS certification uh, recently. And also we completed a very thorough social audit with IKEA, so called iWay audit. Oh, yeah. We did actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Rose? Let's go to Laura. Laura Barth, yes, all the way from Cologne. Yes, I'm from Germany, right? <laughs> I'm writing my uh, bachelor's thesis about um, rental models in general. Okay. And very at the beginning <laughs> uh, in my research. Um, but I would like to know if. if people um, lease uh, your jeans more or do they buy um, where's where are the interests <laughs> it's it's an interesting question because we're right on it um, we started le this leasing thing in nearly nine years ago yeah. and um, it's difficult to do it in stores so to today our turnover is split into our own web shop and the, the 300 stores we work with in 30 countries now um, and from our web shop, we do the leasing and around half or nearly half of that turnover is done by leasing. But so it's, it, let's say it's a quarter of our turnover. And today, actually this week, we launched uh, a system that now also the leasing can be done in the stores. So we have now uh, a program, it all programmed and ready for shopkeepers to also offer the leasing. And then we'll see how much that is going to be. I'm, I'm curious to see if that's going to be picked up. Stores do like it because uh, it will create some traffic for them. They will they will talk about it, and um, and I think that um, the that gives them the possibility to offer our whole uh, collection. Uh, imagine you have a store, and you want to sell mud jeans. We now have about. I think 20 different styles for men's and oh sorry for women and about 10 for men and all that in two or three colors and then in 20 sizes so you can imagine that if you want to have all that's a lot but now you can say okay i have one size kit with the other colors and you can lease out our jeans so it sounds a little complicated but it's not actually it's it's a it's a better we call it the post corona solution for retailers today and um, we'll hope that We'll launch it really big in September because then the sales start again and people. We're testing it now in three stores. Um, I don't think one in Germany yet. No, not yet. It's three in Holland, just for testing if it works. Maybe for Cologne, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, we work in Cologne with uh, uh, the Inut. What's it called? Yeah. The store called? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. what, what's it called? What are they called? Inuit, Something with the Inut. I think. Yeah. Yeah. We have two or three stores in, in Colonia selling us. They, they might try to do it. Because before they had people coming to their store saying, I want to try my jeans and then thank you very much. And then I love the leasing system. I will do it online. 
and that's also not good for the store of course it's not a sustainable system so we we try to implement it now and i'm, I'm very curious to see if it is going to be picked up or not and one last question for me <laughs> it's okay to, we're um recycling um yeah do you uh, have partners in this or how do you organize your recycling facilities or how's this process looking like <laughs> uh, that, that's actually quite easy and it's well uh, written in our on our website also and also in the sustainability report but it, it's very simple we we have two ways to get back our old jeans so one is with the leasing system and one is with the deposit where people can get a 10 euro discount when they bring back their old jeans and we even opened that up for other brands also, as long as there's 95% cotton. And all these jeans that we gather, we, we save them for let's say one or two months and then uh, three or four big pellets then go to Spain where uh, in Valencia to uh, Royo Tijedos. Tijedos, how do you say it, Laura? I'm always saying this wrong, it's, it's a Spanish name. But they, they receive all our jeans and they also have jeans from outside because there weren't enough and they are tearing them apart shredding them mixing them now with uh, new organic cotton and then make this yarn again and weaving and making whole denim rolls that then go to tunisia so those are it's quite simple actually so you you need more jeans you said to do yeah we're growing we're growing fast okay and we're using all these old jeans. So they, they put also jeans that they gather together in Spain also and from other places. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for this great opportunity to speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's end. okay. We do it every month. You can ask Safi. Safi is a regular. She comes every month to our webinar. You can ask yeah. the next question, Safi. Go ahead. Yeah, she has a lot um, of questions, Safi. I know. Her. Yeah. Uh, um, you mentioned before that uh, you like uh, would like to have like a law change towards like a favor circular economy. Yeah. Um, is there any kind of like a, uh, like a, something to show that there is some like a change already happening based on what you've done, or is there something else that you've yes. like actions you've taken towards policy that, that yeah. something has happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a fighter. Since nine years ago, I went to see the Dutch economic ministry and explained to them what we were doing. They, they didn't want to know anything. But actually, there's two things happening now. One is called uh, uh, EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility, which I think is normal. Uh, like if we make jeans and we use organic cotton and non-toxic indigo and, and uh, take care of the chemicals and take, try to be... Uh, reasonable with the people that make our jeans and, and give them a proper thing this all is it should be normal but then and and some companies are already doing this but then i think it's also important that the product you put into the market you are still responsible you cannot say okay it's sold by and we feel responsible so we would like to have it back after use to be able to recycle it and then give it a, a next good uh, possibility and that's now called uh, EPR, Extended Producer Responsibility. That's funny because that word didn't even exist uh, 10 years ago. So something is happening there. And, and in Holland, there's uh, a movement called x -Tex, and they're pushing really hard to try to change uh, the taxation from on, on, uh, on um, how to say, Arbeit in German, on work instead of, uh, but it has to move to raw materials. So we should tax raw materials higher and more and, or in CO2 emission, for instance, but take the taxes away from, from working, from labor, because that's ridiculous. You know, we have labor enough, but there's not enough raw material. And that's also now slowly happening. And we have a European Commission, commission, commission that is trying hard with, the, with their green deal. So yeah, I think it's moving a little bit. Huh? Yeah, those are great examples. And also a final one that I had top of my head was also the, um, the denim deal. That's something that was yeah. happening um, last year. It's still ongoing now. It's a Dutch initiative. Sorry, I'm just trying to put my phone on silent. Um, you have a lot of admirers uh, Laura, and <laughs> texting you all the time. And um, 
the objective of the deal is to have the Dutch denim industry all produce their denim with at least 5% post-consumer recycled cotton. Um, and so what's really interesting is that the government has brought to the table all of the very important players, which is very unique. So it's not just the brands, but it's the sorters, it's the recyclers, it's the spinners, so the mills and, and also uh, the manufacturers. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, and the idea is that if this plays successfully, then it would sort of be expanded to the rest of Europe. It's, it's kind of a small pilot also as part of, of the Green Deal. Um, and, I, and that's really unique and really speaks to the effort of trying to become more circular um, and very specific to uh, the denim industry. Oh, and also like there's a jeans redesigned by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. That's also a really big push coming through. Yeah, what, what was your role in this? Like, uh, just to clarify, like, how have you contributed to these changes? To me? Yeah, like well, how much Jean did lot. Uh, Well, Bert, don't you sit also in the panels for the Green Deal discussions to some of them? Yes, yeah, we do. We are often interviewed. So people write about our company and they, they, they write about what we would like to have so it's all over the press already but there's no direct contract between me i try to reach out to stinky van Veldhoven, who's our minister or used to be our minister for uh, uh for this but um i did speak to them but not it didn't really help but yeah how, how yeah it's it's by talking about it all the time and, <laughs> and making noise i would say no yeah yeah, Thanks. maybe the Ellen MacArthur Foundation is really helping. They are pushing this kind of thing forward. And also Circle Economy and MVO Nederland, maybe you know them. Those kind of, we have to count a little bit on, on these um, um, movements that are, are, are trying to improve these things. And our role is also to make beautiful jeans and try to be there next year as a jeans company. So we can't all the time do webinars and talk to politicians and things like that, but we try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also participated, there was a referendum with yeah. the European Commission and we participated in the development of a draft uh, proposal. Yeah. So we, we do like participate in those discussions so that they go up at a policy level. And with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, for example, they set guidelines for the genes redesign. If you're curious into that, I, you can maybe Google it because it's quite detailed. They just developed a bunch of guidelines to help brands become more circular. And we were one of the main contributors to those guidelines. And then we, of course, joined the initiative. With the denim deal, for us, it's a very symbolic status because we're leaders in, in circular denim. So yeah. using 5% post-consumer recycled cotton and setting goals on that is really um, it's a joke, yeah. It's a joke. To, in a very humble way, like we are using up to 40% and we're aiming for 100 by the end of the year. So it's more a symbolic status. Um, and of course, again, a platform for us to share our knowledge with other brands and organizations. Yeah. Anybody else? Laura, Rose? You're lucky today because nor normally we have... 20 to 30 students and they only get the chance to have one question, but you're lucky today. So shout, or did you ask everything? Louisa? Uh, yeah, I yeah I have a question if, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, um, sure, go ahead. I want to ask you about um, investor interest. I don't know either at Magins particularly or that you might've witnessed with other companies that you're uh, in contact with. Um, yeah. if, the B Corp certification or sustainability in general um, is becoming something that investors are looking at uh, either because they want to, because it aligns with their values or because they don't want to be confronted with the risk associated with, with climate change and with either regulations or, you know, uh, loss of, of raw materials and everything. Um, if it's something that investors are looking at and if you're seeing this. Yeah, that's an interesting question. We, we were, Growing fast, we are growing fast. So um, that means that 
the liquidity is is getting difficult because we we sell more we have to buy more and in between there's a gap and, and your money is gone so that's normal so we had to look for investors and two years ago one and a half year ago we had um stichting doen and um uh, north holland's participation funds i say it in dutch because you can understand that and, and yeah of course they were uh it, it was opportune to have uh, the b corp status because they want to support companies that um, are driving the economy in another direction and and for to give you an example they they called us last year on the 15th of march saying okay guys there's a pandemic something horrible is happening uh, are you okay do you need money that's quite a nice uh, so we were okay we said no no need but um it's it's that kind of investor of course that we would like to have on board and we had a lot of other people where we said okay no thank you because the only thing they had in mind is to make as much as possible money uh whereas stichting doon is saying okay how much water every quarter we have to tell them how much water we saved and how much co2 emission we we did less and, and what targets we have and that's also in the in the b corp audit so for us very easy to uh, to explain it to and to 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 um to give them the information because we have all the data um so yes also on on the and then one more thing uh pwc helped us because not only we are a b corp but also a social enterprise in holland but it also has to do with b corp and they said okay we can give you pro bono hours we can do a, a project for you if you want and that was very helpful because they calculated the the worth of our company what's it worth for us a lot for other people nothing and um and it was good to be um at the table in discussions with investors to have at least an idea of what your company is worth and uh, how how you can uh, negotiate that so yeah there are examples of of advantages of being a b corp i would say anything to add laura do i no do something okay okay thank you so as like as you're saying it kind of goes both ways in the sense that investors are going to want to invest in such companies for certain reasons and also the other way around that you want to we want uh like funds that also share your values to invest in your companies and not funds who are only looking for profits yeah because our the aim and that's what we also have to write in the statutes of our company when you're a b corp the aim is of course to be a company to be a limited to to uh to do business and make money but that's not the highest uh and, and to be there also next year and we have to make profit and money because we want to invest in new things and develop new things and things like that and, and i want to pay uh, the people that work for us properly um but it's not the number one value let's say we we try to make as much as money as we can and that as a b corp you you you've written that in your statutes of the company so it's yeah. it's done deal in the mandate so basically yeah. if you sell the company the person that receives that company still has to follow that mandate of the company yeah. and that is to protect the the stakeholders so that includes the employees the supply chain part like everyone it's not yeah. just to make money and profit yeah. okay, thank you sure. anybody else Yes, I have another question regarding the your pricing model. Um, yeah. Because now I saw on your website you can lease the beans for one year, and in Germany I found a a, um, a company Unown. I don't know if you know them. Um, where you can lease several styles for like two weeks. Um, yeah. Such models or pricing models um be interesting for you or, yeah, do you consider? Yeah, we've looked at that also, and we've we've looked also, for instance, rent the runway in the United States. That's also more or less their model, and we do have a lot of these questions. But for us, um, and that's maybe where we are not really a, a product as a service company, but which is now very much talked about. I think is that what you mean? But we are more actually the reason we do this was that we wanted to have the raw material back after use. 
So our main point of, of doing the leasing is more to, to, to generate uh, interest of people saying, okay, I understand when I'm wearing these jeans, uh, I know that after use they will be recycled. So maybe our system is not the best renting system. You, you can't even really call it a rest renting system, which is sometimes disappointing for people because they come to us and they really enjoy it and like, like it. But uh, no, the, the most important thing for doing this was saying, we want to have the raw material back. So we're not really a rental company, uh, to be honest. It's more like you're paying 12 times your, your jeans and then it stops. And if you want to keep them for 10 years, that's perfect. As long as one day you send it back to us. And, and we have a lot of people saying, can I rent them for six months? Mm -hmm. And we've calculated it. It's very difficult for us. Um, the, all, the whole handling in Europe to take clothing back, to wash it, to steam it, to fold again, bring it back. Into, it's nearly more expensive than buying a new pair of jeans if you do that here. Uh, we do have the repair service. For instance. We try to, to give leasers uh, possibilities of of the second lease is cheaper, for instance, you know, so we, we try to keep them as customers, which works really well. We see also that uh, many families, partners work together and you see that, that more people of the family lease our jeans, things like that. But the really rental system is, is not our aim. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not. But if other people do that, yeah, of course, it's also an idea. Reference in Holland, Lena, I don't even know them. Our jeans are there also. It's like a library for clothing where you can pick some things. And, mm -hmm. huh? It's called Lena Library, yeah. Lena yeah. Library, yeah. Lena, okay. And then our jeans are there also. So you can try our jeans for a week. But that's a different business model. Yes, okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I've got another question. Um, Rosa is... from Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us. Um, whether would you say that the manufacturing and design process that you guys have is scalable and a long-term solution for the industry as a whole? Ah, good question. Uh, it is scalable because we've proved it, and we, of course, we try to grow because we've given ourselves actually a, a, a two two missions. One is to scale ourselves and make more impact because we are growing and we, we can save more genes. And the second is that we, and that's what we're doing now, we try to show the, the industry uh, and share also our knowledge with the industry because we hope that the whole industry will change. And if, uh, if I see today the speed at what they are changing, it's close to zero, which means that we are still, uh, we still have to be there, I'm afraid, for the coming time. But we are growing fast and uh, there are coming laws of, say, uh, like the Green Deal you said, Laura, where, where people are going to be pushed to use post-consumer waste. Um, Laura, do you have anything to add here? Um, sure no, yeah, I, I think you said it, Bert. I also see, so for example, in the manufacturing process, sort of the technology that is used, a really strong manufacturer of this technology is called um, Genologia, I think I'm saying that yeah, right. Yeah. And so- Genologia. Oh, exactly. And um, they're super strong. And I see that a lot of the bigger brands are purchasing those machines, the bigger brands, the Indy Texas, the Levi's. So the fact that they are purchasing those machines that are able to produce genes in a more sustainable way is a hint that, you know, there is a potential for, for scaling. But I think that's definitely the intention. After all, our purpose is to demonstrate that it's possible and then inspire the, the bigger ones to, you know, to take it on and say, okay, we can do it too. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope that that we've answered all your questions. Just a small question, maybe. Do you see more opportunities sure. to, to recycling um, in the recycling industry? Because I think they are very, yeah, at the beginning <laughs> with everything. Um, in Germany, we have um, clothes, but I don't know, in other countries, I think it's, it's different. So do you see some, yeah, future in recycling? 
in our do we see some examples of people doing the same things? I, I didn't hear the first part of your question. This sounds a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's better now. Is yes, it? much yeah. better. Yes. Um, um, do you see um, in the recycling industry more, more and more opportunities to recycle um, other garments also? Uh, yeah. So, um, oh, what I always mix them up. But there is this great initiative, Warren again. I think they are developing the technology where you, they can you can actually not only um, I'm, I'm mixing up the names, but in the UK specifically, there's some innovation being driven on being able to read the material and the fabric immediately and being able to identify the composition <laughs> of the fabric, and then the technology to melt that fabric and separate it so that it can be used to recycle. Um, sorry, to make new chemically designed yarns to make new clothes. And that's really top innovation. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it's called worn again, but I always mix them up, so. Yeah. yeah, and then we ourselves, we are trying to improve every day our performance. So today, like you said, it's 40% post-consumer waste that we use in our new jeans and 60% virgin organic cotton, but we are the, what we call the road to 100. We are going to 100%, meaning we make new jeans from old jeans. And we do that, there will be a, a documentary about that, which we will launch, I think somewhere in September, maybe four parts. Actually, what we do is we try to use uh, two different techniques. One is the, the, the one we do now, uh, the mechanical recycling, and we will also use uh, molecular, you have a better word for that, molecular recycling or chemical recycling or yeah, green chemistry, we call it. Because... Green chemistry, much better. Whereas like, like you do with bamboo, you bring the, the material back to pulp and then make filaments out of that. Well, you've seen it yourself, Laura. You explain. What do we do? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. And so once you have the two types of, of fibers, then you blend them in together, but they're both made directly from post-consumer recycled yeah. uh, cotton. So... And the idea here is, or what we're trying to, the big barrier that we're trying to overcome is that currently there is a limitation to only working with mechanical recycled cotton, and that is the length of the fiber. So by bringing in the chemically recycled cotton, we're able to make a stronger fiber, better denim, and make our product even more circular. So that's really exciting. And if you meant like other products, like t-shirts and things like that, it's a little bit more complicated because the yarn is fine. Of course, we took denim also because denim is a nice, rough, sturdy yarn, which you can easily recycle. And when there are some mistakes in it, you, you it's difficult to see. But if you take like a man's shirt, a really fine yarn or, or, or a t-shirt, it's very thin yarns. So for mechanical recycling, that's difficult. If you take uh, chemistry recycling, then it's more easy. And then there's of course other materials that are very much recyclable, like wool. If you keep wool separate and you can make a, a stream of mono material wool, wool is very much uh, recyclable. It's, it's, and, and the Italians are doing that already. And if you take polyester, um, you can also recycle that of course. But uh, okay, we are concentrating on, on uh, on cotton, that's our thing. Uh, and uh, the, the challenge in, in all clothing is try to keep your stream of material mono, mono stream. Then it's possible. When you start mixing, it's becoming very difficult. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. I shared the discount code with you because we hope that you will all become ambassadors of our brand and wear our brand and tell to your friends that you're wearing a pair of jeans. That helps us a lot. And um, I hope to see you again. I have one, one more question from about, Louisa. Because I have a pair of mud jeans, actually. Uh, <laughs> that You're I've, the best. <laughs> that I've been leasing for uh, a few months now. I think it ends uh, yeah, in a few months. Um, but yeah. I have a practical question <laughs> because I lost weight at some point. So now it's a little too small. But <laughs> like, I want to keep it and I want to keep wearing it. But it's now a little too loose. And yeah, I know there's something that I could do 
I mean, in the sense of, I don't know if you have, uh, I don't know, something to kind of change it or I don't know if it's a possibility or if I should. Yeah. should <laughs> we actually we actually try try to help uh, we're thinking of this actually to launch the obese genes not that you are obese but people have challenges these times losing weight and we wanted to actually maybe we'll come one day that we say okay if you if you can prove that you lost weight and we'll help you with your guard wardrobe uh, by changing to a smaller size but for you normally we we, we need a 12 months to be uh, profitable because sure. To, to send back and forth, but we can make an exception, of course, for a real so fan. At the end of the 12 months, I could yeah. send it. Yeah, and then you get the, the next one is cheaper. It's oh, 890, okay. it's 8.95 per month. So we try to help you in that way. Okay. But if so you want to do it now, I don't know, Laura. Can we make exceptions here? Okay. I'm 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 yeah. the worst person. <laughs> like when it ends, but I, I was just wondering if there was a possibility. If there is a possibility if you if you come to our if you come to our office we have some beautiful uh, vintage jeans that could fit you and we we can we can do something there okay we thank do that you. with customers okay which thank which model are you wearing i i guess the skinny hazen flared yeah Is it's like no? a skinny uh blue like dark blue one uh <laughs> <a> dark blue <laughs> one <laughs> That's like, what kind of car do you drive? You said it has a steering wheel and four wheels. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a like a skinny, uh, skinny one, dark blue. Uh, but then, like, I don't know exactly when my lease ends. And I don't know, I might have the smallest size. So I, then from there, I don't know what I can do. 25? Uh, 25. But if you're like me, I also have the smallest size. And I just take it in with my sewing machine. So... That's another recommendation. Like if you go to a tailor. Like if I make these changes, I can still bring it back at the end. Like if at some point. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. You can cut it, stitch it, wash it, paint it. We don't care. We just want the fabric back. Yeah. Um, if it's the smallest size, then I, I might just do this. I, I Yeah, you just go to the 25 tailor. is the smallest size. Take you in here by the waist so your butt still looks good, you know, and then I got you. This and is so, talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. what I did. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. guys. My jeans. I have also one. <laughs> one my jeans. <laughs> and where did you buy it, Laura? Uh, in the, the shop or online? Uh, online. Okay. Yes. Well, good. Thank you. But good to know uh, that uh, in Cologne, I have a store. <laughs> uh, there are more stores. Uh, if you go to the store finder on yeah. our website, Mm -hmm. You can find the stores uh, close to you. But we are quite well. Uh, so, so easy sometimes. <laughs> we, we also have a Manufactum. Do you have a Manufactum close by? Yes, I have. And they have a few styles of us now, okay, which perfect. is a great thing. We are mm -hmm. also on About You and on Zalando. Ooh, the enemy. And what else do we do, uh, Laura? No, I think that's. But North Rhine-Westfalen is very important for us, uh, Laura. It's an important <laughs> Bundesland. Yes, many people. <laughs> it's same as Holland. You can compare and and they are with uh, with Holland. I think mm -hmm. also about 70 million people, right? If I'm well informed. Maybe. Um, well, they all come to my city in Holland to to, uh, to see the sea, so I know them. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I gotta run. Have a nice Me too. Time. But um, thank you. you so can, we did make a recording, so you can uh, ask that at info. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Thank you, Laura, for joining me again today. With pleasure. Thank you, all of you, and good luck with your theses and uh, projects. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.